welcome back to All Around Health Talk and Happy New Year. So this year we're starting our talk show with an episode we're calling How to Save a Life. So on today's episode of How to Save a Life, we're going to be talking about cardiac arrest in adults. So basically cardiac arrest is like a, an interruption of your heart function, both in patients who have heart disease and those who do not. It could happen at any time, it could happen to anyone. And so we want to show you today what to do if you find someone on the floor unresponsive, what you should do to save a life. So follow us and see what you should do. Thank you. So here we have a patient who is on the floor unresponsive. So we don't know what has happened to her, but the most frequent reasons why patients or why people, adults, um, for collapse and are unresponsive is because of a cardiac arrest. So in this case, before we do anything, we have to make sure that the environment is safe, both for us as the rescuer to carry out the whole process and also for the patient. So if the patient or if the person is in traffic, we'll have to move this um, patient out of traffic and put the patient in a safe place to be able to start the process of resuscitation. And also if she's in water, we'll have to bring her out of water, dry her out before we start the process. So to move the patient, we have to be careful to make sure that this patient doesn't have a cervical injury, right? Because if the patient has an accident and has a cervical injury, moving the patient will cause more harm. So that is not the focus of today's video. If you want us to make a video on how to move a patient, if the patient has a cervical injury, please comment below and we'll be glad to make the video. So now we have to make sure the place is safe. So now the place is safe, we have two rescuers, which is very um, important because sometimes you might be alone. In this case, we are two rescuers. So first of all, we want to know if this patient is responsive. Hi, you okay? Okay, so you need to move and ask if the patient is okay. She doesn't respond, we want to check if she's breathing. Okay, so you can listen to the breathing or you can chest the, um, look at the chest to see if there's chest movement or breathing. Okay, so she's not responsive, she's not breathing. We want to call the emergency unit. You could call 911, depending on your country, what number you use for emergency numbers, you can call any of them. So we've called 911 and we need to check now if there's a pulse. So we're going to check if the patient has a pulse. So basically just beside your neck is where, under your jaw, that's where you're going to check. So most times people waste time trying to check the pulse. You check pulse within 10 seconds because we do not have time. So if you don't feel the pulse or if you're not sure that you're, 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 you're um, feeling a pulse, you just have to start the um, resuscitation process. Now for us to start the resuscitation, we need to make sure that we look at the chest region and we're going to use the lower half of the sternum, right? So she is going to use the heel of one hand, place it on that, that point and put her other hand above it. She has to make sure that she has her hand straight. This has to be extended. We don't want you flexing because when you flex, you're not doing anything, you're wasting time. So she's going to do this with her hand straight and she's going to do effective compression. Now she has to make sure that she's doing compressions of 100 to 120 per minute. And she has to pay attention to the depth of the compression, making sure that it's between five to six centimeters of depth. And if you can see when she compresses, she gives the chest time to recoil so that the heart can relax and fill up and continue the process. So you don't want to keep doing this because then the heart doesn't have time to relax and then contract again. So when she's doing the compression, she has to make sure she's counting in a loud voice because she has to do 30 compressions. So the other person who is listening has to pay attention. When she gets to 30 compression, the other person has to give two breaths in two seconds. So she's going to count in, um, loud, in a loud voice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is very important. Now eight. I'm listening to her and when she gets to 30, I know that it's my cue to give in the breath. So what do we do with this patient? There are so many, and uh, there are two um, maneuvers that you can use to give the breath through the patient. So we have the head tilt, we want to move the head tilt, and then the jaw lift, right? And then we open her mouth and we give the two breaths. So we're giving one breath in one second, another breath in the second second. 
and we have to make sure that we're looking at the chest to make sure that there is movement of the chest. Now, if we're suspecting that she has a cervical injury, then we're not going to do the head tilt because that could be dangerous for her. So what we'll do is what we call the jaw thrust. We have to make sure that we put our fingers in this, this angle, the angle of her jaw, and then we move the jaw forward, we open her mouth, and we give her two breaths in two seconds. Right. So that is the process of giving the breath. We have to do this with the compressions. 30 compressions, two breaths. 30 compressions, two breaths, until the paramedics get here, or until the patient responds. If the patient responds, then we have to give a breath every five to six seconds, and we need to check her pulse every two minutes. Now, in this process, if it happens in a mall, in an, in an airport, most times there is a defibrillator around. So, most of the causes of cardiac arrest in adults is um, ventricular defibrillation, um, ventricular fibrillation. So, we need a defibrillator to be able to, to shock the patient back to normal, to shock the heart back to normal rhythm. So, it's important if we find a defibrillator, we can suspend the compression and defibrillate, shock the patient, and then we resume the compression. If the patient responds, then, like I said, one breath every five to six seconds, and then checking the pulse every two minutes until the paramedics get here and take her to the hospital. So basically, this is how you would save a patient's life if you find somebody on the street unresponsive. So uh, we hope that you've learned a lot from today's video. Please don't forget to like our video, share our video, leave a comment, and follow us on Instagram at All Round Health, Health Talk. And thank you for watching. See you in our next video. Bye. Bye.